Let me ask you a question. Who is ready to meet God? Who can say that they are ready to meet God? You're doing everything you know to do, like you're reading your Bible, you're praying, you're talking to God, you're fasting, you're seeking his face, you're living for Christ. Can you say that you are ready to meet God? Okay. I would hope so. No, I, don't, I wouldn't say that. Mm -mm. You, you got some work to do, mother? And you know what? That's what God honors is when yeah. we are honest with him about where we are. And, and I would say I still have some work to do as well. Yeah, but, I have work to do, but like if I'm saying, if he came right now and took me, I would believe I would go to heaven. Me too. I, I agree on that point, but still, I feel like I'm not ready right now. <laughs> I, I'm i not ready to go now either, Mother. I'm not ready to go either. Put it that way. Look, I'm not ready to go. No. <laughs> But no, you We're just, the way you it. said it, but, you know, we all, there's always work that we can do, but yeah. like, you know, you know when things are going to happen, you know? Yes, I mm -hmm. totally 100% agree. We do not know the day nor the hour. Doesn't the Bible tell us that? Yes. And we've right. seen many examples of people right. that try to predict when Jesus is coming. And these are the very people that try to say there's no such thing as God who are trying to predict when Jesus is coming. Make that make sense. Mm. It doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, well, I don't believe in God. I'm an atheist, but if Jesus were to come, he's going to come in 2020. You know, and it's just like, okay, all right. You remember the year 2000? Some of oh, you know. yeah. <laughs> we mm -hmm. had church, and when I say it was packed to the brim, it was mm -hmm. packed to the brim. But we have to be ready at all times to meet the Lord. What are some ways we can prepare ourselves to be ready to meet God? I said, Pastor, uh, our former pastor used to say, repent every day. That's right. Keep a repentant heart. Keep yeah. a repentant heart. As long as you keep a repentant heart, you will always stay humble. You will always stay right. humble. Um, I find myself in a lot of areas in my life where I'm just like, you know, I was I was talking to sister uh, to sister Linda about um, how I felt about one of the famous ministers, um, but the Lord gave me a word through him. You know, I, I really don't care for certain people, and since we're recording, I, I won't say any names, but I really don't care for certain evangelists because I feel like they're on an agenda in some cases, and it doesn't mean that um, it doesn't mean that everybody's on this agenda. It just means that some people need to get, have a closer walk with God. And when I find out you're on this certain agenda, it's kind of hard for me to hear what you have to say. Right. <laughs> but do you remember uh, the story of Balaam? What was, he, what was he riding that talked to him? The donkey. Donkey. What the Bible call that donkey? And okay. ass. Yeah. And in this day and time, metaphorically, we have some people that may look and act like a, the mm -hmm. biblical word. In, yeah. in essence, if God gives them a word to help us and it's going to keep me from dying and going to a burning hell, I need to hear it. So that's right. I, I, I said all of that to say that's the area where I need to improve my life. Because when I find out that there are um, certain flaws that are in these evangelists' life, sometimes it makes it difficult for me to receive a word. And right. I think it's the area where I need to improve on, you know, as far as I got to I gotta learn that if it's God's word, I need to accept what it is and, and move from it and grow from it. I can't- take what's, take what's useful and throw the rest away. There you go. There yeah. you go. I think a lot of times we are so busy. Use what we can. Uh, what'd you say, mother? Use what we can. That's, that's what I do. What you can. A lot of times we're so busy looking at the, uh, we're shooting the messenger, you know, and we're actually forgetting that the word is actually the word. God's word is not going to change. Right. It is not going to change. And you can best believe if they are not living that life, that that word is tearing them up as they're presenting it. <laughs> Because right. the Bible says the word is what? 
sharper than a two-edged sword. A sword. It sure mm -hmm. is. Right. It is yep. sharp. It's cutting even asunder beyond the bone to the marrow. So it not only cuts your soul, but it cuts your flesh and it gets you to get you in order. And so um, I, I need that's areas where I need to learn to prepare myself to be in a better position to meet the Lord. So there are a lot of things that we can do to prepare to meet God. The first thing we can do is keep a repent apart, as Sister Linda said. The second thing is we can put ourselves out of the way, put ourselves to sleep. Uh -huh. A lot of times we are so alive until we can't hear the word of God. We're so aware of everything going around us till we don't know anything about Jesus. I could tell you what Sister So-and-So had on last Sunday. And I could tell you how bad Brother So-and-So looked when he walked in the door. You know what I'm saying? We mm -hmm. need to change our focus, change your focus. When, when you are preparing, if you knew, I'm gonna just ask you, if you knew today was your very last day or tomorrow, let's give you a whole day. Tomorrow was your very last day to live on this earth. What would you do in preparation for your new life with Christ? I don't know, probably tell as many people as I could to try to get them to see the light. And then I'd be praying all day. <laughs> I don't think I'd go to work. I, I don't think I'd go to school. You wouldn't go to school? What would you do to prepare? She said, Sister Linda said she'd tell as many people as she could. I'm going to turn this man. What would you do? <coughs> I think I would spend a lot of my time <laughs> uh, just telling God thank you because I know that he accepts a thankful heart, you know, and if we but we're thankful and we're joyous. That's what he looks for in us. You know, mm -hmm. something else that I would do probably would, I would be trying to finish as much life work as I could so that when I do die, I can die. I can know that my epitaph will read that I gave everything that I had to the Lord. Yeah, you know? that, that could, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, you, you, want, you want to be able to... Um, to leave a legacy, you need leave something behind mm -hmm. where people will know that that was that was Mother Smith. You know, she was known for her praise. You know, something that's what I would work like. I would take that last mm -hmm. day just to try to to reflect on everything that I've done in my life and try to make up for whatever is lost. You know, and right. that's the way we should live our life. Like every day, we should live our life every day like it is our last day. That's right. We don't know. We don't know. Mm -hmm. So this time, <laughs> is you ready, Ooh, mother? You don't still not feeling good, are you? Mm -mm. Oh. I'm doing better. Okay. This topic is be ready to meet God, and it's found. The lesson text is found in Matthew, the 24th chapter and the 44th verse. And Matthew, so that's Matthew 24, 44. And then the next one is Matthew, the 25th chapter and the sixth verse. Say that one again. Matthew 25 and six. Five and six, okay. And the next one is Matthew 25 and 13. Thirteen. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And the next scripture is Matthew. Just read the whole entire 25th chapter. Because it's, okay. it's going down all the verses. <laughs> so let's just read the whole 25th chapter of Matthew. Okay. And our topic is <clears throat> our topic is be ready to meet God. The lesson aim is to be know to God. be ready to meet God. Mm -hmm. The lesson aim is to know is to know that we must be ready to meet God at any given moment or time or day. 
we have to know that Jesus is coming back. And when he does, we have to know that we're ready. We have to be prepared. We have to be, um, we have to be inspired. We have to be solid in the word, knowing that everything that God has instilled in us, every gift that he has given us, that we have exercised those gifts. Because what happened when, um, we're going to talk about the bridegroom. What is a bridegroom? The soon to be husband. Yes. So yes. what happens when a wedding is extremely late? People start getting late. When a wedding is late. People get nervous, late. anxious. Yes, they get nervous, yeah. they get anxious. They start looking around like, where's the bride? What's going on? Where is he? Is it going to be canceled? Well, this is a story about the bridegroom. And it says, and at midnight, there was a cry made. And this is Matthew 25 and 6. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Who is the bridegroom in this day and time? Jesus. Jesus. Absolutely. So when Jesus comes, we have to be prepared. And our Bible tells us to put on the whole Armor. armor of God. What is the whole armor? The shield of faith. Mm -hmm. Come on, y'all. Give me some of the armor. <laughs> give, give me some of the armor. The sword of spirit. Sword of spirit. Sword of the spirit. Absolutely. Sister. Helmet of salvation. Helmet of salvation. Breastplate of righteousness. The breastplate of righteousness. Uh, Why do you think it's important to have that breastplate of righteousness? Guard our heart. Yeah, it's because it's coming to our heart. What is the main thing that Satan tries to attack us with? Our mind. Mm -hmm, absolutely. He tries to tell you, you're not saved. Right. God doesn't love you. You ain't going to make it into the kingdom. And I'm here to tell you just the opposite. When you are guarded by the shield, by the breastplate of righteousness, you don't have to worry about whether you're saved or not. When you know that you've been living for God, you don't have to worry about that. When right. you have faith in God, you don't have to worry about that. So let's go ahead. It says, preparing for the coming of Jesus Christ is not something people often think about. When asked if they are saved, almost everyone you meet will reply, yes. yes. If the question is followed up with, have you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, what is the response generally? I don't know. Uh, well, you, yeah. well, I don't want to stop. I, I want to wait till so. I get stuff right first. <laughs> I'm trying to take, uh, see what I'm doing is I'm trying to. So you get a lot of excuses when you ask them, okay, have you allowed God to be Lord over that drug habit? Have you allowed God to be Lord over your sexual habits? Have you allowed God to be Lord over every sin that you're committing in your life? Then you have the question mark that comes up. So a lot of people will say, no, all that is not necessary. Some people will say, well, I believe in him. Even more perplexing is this. If asked if they are ready to meet God, some will say no or not yet. While others will give an excuse, just like you all said. What this simply means is that they do not have a true understanding of the concept of facing God, standing before the judgment seat of the creator. A lot of people have this misconception that they're going to have this big crowd of people standing all around them when they talk to God. But mm -hmm. when you go to court and you have to talk to a judge, is everybody talking at the same time you're talking? No, no. Nope. You stand before that judge with people? No. Nope. It's you. You are the one being judged. Right. You are the one being cross-examined. And the Bible says that we are going to be tried by every deed that's done in our body, in our mm -hmm. mortal bodies. We're going to be tried. We're going to have to answer questions. So the best thing to do, the Bible says, is to examine ourselves. And we're going to get some more scriptures for you. It says that what it simply means is that they do not have a true understanding of the concept of facing God. Everyone will one day have to meet God, their maker, whether they meet him in peace or judgment of condemnation will be solely based upon if they are ready. Jesus says, according to Matthew 24 and 44, therefore be ye also ready 
for in such an hour as ye think, not the son of man cometh. So Matthew 24 and 44 says that Jesus is coming when you don't think he is. Right, right. when you everything, expected. when you least expect it. We had this lady that was at our church, she used to walk in the door and be like, Dad! <laughs> And every time she would do that, we all would be like, oh no, we're going to meet the Lord. And my dad used to get up and be like, Jesus is coming back. And whenever he would say that, we would expect for somebody to take their departure. Our pastor knew, you know, that it was a time when it was time for Jesus to, to come and to take one of his soldiers home. So not all people will be ready to meet God. We must be prepared to meet the soon returning King because the word declares that ready or not, y'all know like little kids play hide and seek, mm -hmm. ready or not, he is coming. Yeah. At midnight, there was a cry made, behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Jesus proves this in the parable about 10 people referred to as virgins. Five of them are ready to meet God, but five of them are not. This word virgin is a pivotal, a pivotal attribute of the text. In general, it refers to a pure or uh, virtuous damsel. It can also be likened unto those who profess to believe in Christ. The ready five have oil in their lamps. Some scholars consider the oil, the Holy Ghost, our relationship with the Lord. Have you ever, and I spoke to you, you all about that before, I want to ask you, what is an example of having the oil? The being, being anointed. Anointed. Yes, being anointed. What's another way? What's anointed mean for those of, those, those of us who are on here who don't know what that means? Uh, yeah, with the spirit. Mm -hmm. Filled with the spirit. You could feel, you could feel the anointing. You could feel God's yeah. presence as they are singing. You could feel it moving something on the inside of you. You could feel your, your body connecting, your spirit connecting with theirs. And you could feel their spirit is connected with God. There was this lady, she was singing and <laughs> she sang so terribly. She sang, ter I mean, there was no, not one note in there. She was singing in the key of, of J. I mean, just, it was just, oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus. <laughs> but you know what? The more she called on Jesus, every single time the church would go up, every single time. And mm -hmm. I was asking the young man that was telling me the story. I said, what do you think it was about her? He said, she sincerely loved the Lord. And as she was singing that song, it was just an anointing there. Without God's anointing, Samson would not have been able to slay the, the Philistines. Samson would not have been able to take the, the bone of an ass and destroy those uh, soldiers. He wouldn't have been able to do any of those things without the wisdom of God. If you read um, in Samson, a lot of people say, well, it was his hair. No. Every single time it said an anointing came upon Samson, God's spirit came upon him. You can see that. You can read it. So we don't have God's spirit upon us. Our ordinary things will just be ordinary. But once God's anointing is on you, your ordinary becomes extraordinary. That's it. You're not like everybody else. The things that you do, somebody might do the same thing, but it will not be like you. It will not be able to be duplicated. Right. You ever taste somebody's food? And like my mom, she made this sweet, uh, so this potato salad. I've never tasted anybody else's potato salad that tastes like my mother's. Why? Because she was anointed to make that. God gave her wisdom of how to, what exactly to put in this potato salad to where people would come all over from all over the United States and ask, did Rose make it? <laughs> so she didn't make the potato salad. They didn't want it. So God is giving each and every one of us a special anointing. And when we have that anointing, it destroys what? The yoke. It the destroys yoke. yokes, yes. So that's what you mean by the oil. It can also be likened unto those who profess to believe in Christ. The ready five have oil in their lamps. Some scholars consider the oil, the Holy Ghost, our relationship with the Lord. The five unready 
are like those mentioned in the introduction who know of Jesus, and that is the full extent of their belief. They have no relationship with him, and he will declare to them that he does not know them. In the process of time, a call will be made for all to meet God. The ones that are ready will go back to heaven with him and enter into rest. Jesus closes the parable by a warning. He says, watch therefore, and we used to sing that as a congregational song, didn't we? Mm-hmm. For you know neither the day when the, when the Lord, Lord shall yes. Yes. away. Yes, for you know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. That is Matthew 25 and 13. This means to be ready, be prepared to meet God. Since you don't know the day nor the hour when Jesus will come back, it also means he expects us to be ready and stay ready. It also means that the enemy is going to try whatever he can to distract you from your purpose. Right. He's going to do everything in his power to remind you of who you used to be. But Mm -hmm. once you have a brand new covering, you're covered in the blood of Jesus Christ. Why is the blood important? Who can tell me? Because it covers. Not only does the blood cover, but it's inside of us, right? So we, Mm -hmm. our, our whole genetic makeup changes once we accept Jesus Christ. The Bible says that old things are what? Passed away, you know. Yes. So that old, if you think about who you were before Jesus was in your life, you were a whole different person. Your mindset was totally different. Mm -hmm. But now that you've accepted the Lord in your in your life, if He's truly Lord of your life, you like, no, I don't want to go back to that. Uh Uh-uh. No, no. You've become a brand new creation. So I look at the blood. So, hello. Oh, I, when I when you said what is the blood, the first thing that came to my mind was it's a filtration. It takes out um, those th- things that are bad, and it purifies it, and um, and and puts it, you know, the way it should be. You know, it, it rectifies and purifies. Circulatory, ex, ex, exit and entrance. I like that. And the blood, actually, like you said, if your blood is polluted. If you have cancerous cells in your blood, then what does it do to your entire body? Exactly what Debbie said. It filtrates, it cleans, it it purifies. Jesus's blood washes us clean of anything, of everything. It's actually like a blood transfusion. He gets rid of all the bad blood and he puts in his blood to replace the bad. Amen. <laughs> I want you to, I want you to listen to this. This is Matthew, the 13th chapter and the 30th verse. And then I'm going to show you some scriptures. It says, before God shall stand before people from every tribe and nation on the earth and the Lord himself shall do the separating. This is why I had someone ask me on the other day about suicide and, and they were wanting to know, you know, when people take their life, do they go to heaven or hell? And I told her, I said, you know, when it comes to salvation and when it comes to loving God, that means we trust God. That means that we are not trying to answer questions that God, only God can answer. Some things we have to trust that it's just God's business. The old Uh folks used to tell us, leave God's business to God. You get out of there. You let God solve that. Don't try to figure (laughs) out what's happening with someone after they die don't do that because you're going to drive yourself crazy we don't have it right here in this scripture in matthew 13 and 30 it says that god himself is going to do what judge he's going to do the judging he's going to do the separating and it says he says as it relates to dealing with godly and the ungodly let both grow excuse me together until the harvest And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, gather ye together first the tares and bind them in bundles and tares. What are tares? Weeds. Yes. And burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. So what does wheat have on it? On each stalk? The grain. Uh, grain. Grain. And what what can you do with the grain? Plant it and make, wait, no, you can make flour. 
you can plant it and you can make more wheat or you can Mm -hmm. utilize it and make food with it. So it's useful. Uh God wants us to be planting seeds. He expects us to take his word and make it food. What is the thing that Jesus kept doing to the people when he sit them down? He would feed them. Mm -hmm. He, He believed in eating. And there's so many people out here hungry for the word of God. And here we are being selfish. We got the word of God in our heart. But you know what? I'm going to just kick it for a minute. I'm going to kick it for a minute. And you have the word of God in you. And you're deciding to let the weed of sin grow up and choke it out. What does God have for you? He says, separate it and burn it. Gather ye together first the tares and bind them in a bundle to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. So God is going to store us and protect us. Like the sheep from the goats, God will divide the good from the bad or the believers from the unbelievers. Good people will be on the right side and bad people will be on the left. So the good people are the believers, the bad are the unbelievers. And then I have someone to ask me, well, does that mean that God hates me? Does God hate people? No. No. No, he don't. He loved them. He hates sin. But he he hates the sin that they do. Yes, ma'am. God is love. He loves Mm -hmm. everybody. He wants everybody to make a decision to live for him. Mm -hmm. Amen. He hates the sin because the sin destroys the soul. Separates us. What happens first? The sin is conceived. And when sin is conceived, it brings forth death so first yeah, yeah. the lust and then the lust brings forth sin and then the mm-hmm. sin brings forth yeah, death. Brings forth god death. loves you so much he doesn't want you to die in the state that you're in but a mm-hmm. lot of us are in our ignorance and we like oh, god just hate me because if he loved me he loved me just the way i am he created me this way but god said you must be born again yeah. Yeah. we are born into yeah. sin but god is offering you a better way yeah. Right. And the laws of the they kingdom like. are God cannot interfere with you unless you want him to. So he's not going to force you. He could be, he could, he would be a tyrant then, but God is sovereign. He doesn't force yeah. any of us to yeah. do anything. He gives us free will. Amen. So if you choose to be in sin, then you choose a life without God. You can't blame them. If somebody keeps kicking you in your face, are you going to keep running up to them so they can kick you again? No. We expect God to do that for us. We spit in his face. We betray him just like Judas did. We talk about him when we go into sin. We, We turn our back on him when we do things that we know he's told us not to do. But then we want to say, but God, you got to love me. Are you serious? Just the way I am. Just take me just with all my mess. You, you, you take it. Are you serious? But let me ask you a question. Would you allow someone to come into your nice clean house after they've been scooping poop out, out in the backyard and walking through a cow patch? Would you allow them to come in your nice clean house with their shoes on, with all the cow poop? on their shoes and trape through your living room. Would you allow them to do that? No. You would have some kind of fit. Okay, let me take it on another level for those people in me like that are saying that that's unrealistic. How about this? How about I came home one night, I was so sleepy. I left my keys in the door. <laughs> Went to sleep all night with the keys in the door. Woke up the next morning, was late for work because I could not find my keys. Wow. The door was... Yeah, it was locked. I locked it with the keys in the door. So imagine, how would I feel if somebody said, well, you left the keys in the door. I just came on in and took me a nap too. Uh-huh. Um, I'm like, what, what? Right. <laughs> had a bit. Wouldn't I? But that's what we do when the devil comes on in with all his imps and comes to try to destroy our lives. All of a sudden, we want to call on God. Now, I just believe God is going to deliver me. But when you had an opportunity to live for God, you were doing everything you were big and bad enough to do and wondering why the devil came in. You left the keys in the door. You gave him the keys to come on in. And that's what we do when we renounce God. When we say that, you know what? 
God, we don't want you. I don't want you in my life. I, I want to live my life. I, I am a God. I can live my life just the way I want to live it. And I can just manifest things and I can say what I want because God made me a God. You're lying to yourself. It's the devil. He's lying to you. There is no life without God. There's no oil. There's no anointing. And when Jesus comes back, you're going to be left behind. Yes. No in between. Right. And we're in this new age with the stones and with the, uh, what are those other things that people are doing? Uh, huh? The crystals and crystals um, and burning sage. Burning sage. Tarot cards. Tarot cards. Horoscopes. Uh, what's your sign? Don't fall into that trap, y'all. Mm. Do not fall into that trap. I was telling my daughter, I said, if I go to a family reunion and my last name, I was telling, I was telling my daughter, I told Kiara the same story. I said, I go to a family reunion. My last name is Reed, but I'm going to the Jackson family reunion. And I go up there and they say, hey, uh, where's your t-shirt? Do you have a t-shirt? I'm wearing a Reed family reunion on my t-shirt but I'm going to the Jackson reunion. How does that make sense? Am I going, is somebody gonna say, well, come on in. I know you're not a Jackson, but come on in. We're gonna, we're gonna celebrate you. No, but if I'm married to a Jackson, that gives me access to the reunion, right? Right. Mm -hmm. That's the same way it is when you adopt a, 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 uh, a name of what do they call you when you adopt a sign like um, Aries, Scorpio, Leo, Cancer. When you adopt those names, you are actually accessing, giving the devil access to connect you to his family. Mm -hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. when people ask you what your sign is and you say Scorpio, Aries, Pisces, whatever those demonic signs are, you directly connect yourself to a demonic spirit, a demonic entity that is attached to that astrological sign. I have to say, I don't believe in them. I say my sign is Jesus Christ. <laughs> I had someone, I had someone recently ask me my sign and I said, Aquarius. And then I had to go and repent because I realized, you know, um, that's not that's not from the of the Lord. So why isn't it of the Lord? Because uh that's first of all, it's astrology. You worshiping um divinations. Yes. And what does and, the Bible say about divination? That the devil for them The Bible says that they are going to have their part in the lake of fire i'm gonna read it. It. Uh -huh. i'm gonna read that to you right quick oh no it says i can't minimize oh no let me see i'm not gonna minimize let me read this to you uh -huh. i'm gonna read this to you it says okay. in revelations the 21st chapter and the eighth verse Revelations 21 and 8, it says, I'm going to let you know who is not going to make it into the kingdom. It says, but the fearful. What does it mean to be fearful? Doubt. Yeah, I'm, I'm scared of everything. I'm, I'm scared. I'm just scared of everything. Don't I don't like, you know, I'm I, everything unnerves me. Everything frightens me. I can't go, you know, I'm just fearful. You're scared. Unbelief. You've allowed fear a fear of, of fear to overtake you. Something will make, you know, when you're in the house by yourself, a lot of times loud noises will be made, things will be creeping and stuff like that. But you got to start rebuking the devil. That's you right. cannot be fearful. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. have to, the Bible says, but the fearful and unbelieving. What is unbelieving? Atheists? Yeah. Who? It's of the devil, I think. Anyway. Unbelieving people that don't believe in God. They don't believe in the devil. They don't believe there are devils. They don't believe that there are angels. They don't believe there's a heaven. They don't believe there's a hell. 
unbelieving, the abominable. What's abominable? Oh my. Just, oh my God. Right. just a scary, terrible, terrible, just ungodly, just nasty, just atrocious people that just do uh, degrading things, people that just do nasty, gory things on purpose, murderers and whoremongers. And moral revulsion, just cruel. Yes, that's about Despicable. Yes. <laughs> what about a murderer? What's a murderer? Yeah. Somebody that kills people. Yeah, that's why Gabby said it kills Whoremongers. What's a whoremonger? The following the whoring around. Yeah. That's a, the best word probably just be cursed. What's a whoremonger though? They're defiling their bodies. Yep. People that are sleeping around. Y'all, mm. y'all too complicated for me. We gotta break it down. I wanna, I wanna know somebody that can sleep just sleep around and it's nothing. You know, I meet you today, sleep with you tomorrow. All right, I'm done with you. Sleep with you today. <laughs> and I'll meet with you tomorrow. Just sleeping around, you have no respect for your temple at all. That's a whoremonger. The whoremonger. That is a whoremonger. And it says sorcerers. Witchcraft. Anybody mm -hmm. that deals with tarot cards, anybody that's dealing with those stones, anybody that is dealing with astrology. So you are committing sorcery when you say, I am an Aquarius. I am a Taurus. I am a Scorpio. When you say you connect yourself to those, those things that deal with divination, you're dealing with sorcery. Mm -hmm. Idolaters. What's an idolater? Idol worshiper. Yes. Yes. There, and there's a religion. Uh, the Hindu religion, where they have a god for every day of the year, 365 of them. Wow. All liars and all liars shall have their part in the lake, which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. I don't want to go. I don't either. And I was so amazed when a liar, because I used to be a really good liar, when a liar was in the same category as a murderer, or a sorcerer, or somebody that practice, practices witchcraft, I had to stop lying. Because I'm like, oh, Lord, God, gonna, he, gonna, he not even going to talk to me. The Bible said that even the he will judge everyone else. But what does he say about the liar? What's unique about the liar when he goes before the throne? He shall have his place in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone. Also, and Mother said it exactly. She said exactly what I was looking for. A liar won't even, he won't even give him Very a in his sight. chance to say he's gonna be like oh, next. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I do not want that. I don't I, either. I'm I'm sorry. Sorry. So when you hear those things that categorize that are categorized as keeping you from making it into the kingdom of heaven, what pricks your mind? What do you think about? in your mind, and I'm not, this is a rhetorical question. I want you to think about those areas that I mentioned in Revelation. And I want you to actually analyze your life. Take a really close look at your life. As they say, take a gander and see if any of those areas fit you. Because if they do, you need to get that right. You will not be able to meet the Lord. First Corinthians six, we got time for one more verse. First Corinthians, the sixth chapter, and the ninth through the eleventh verse. First Corinthians, the sixth chapter, and the ninth through the eleventh verse. It says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators. And what is a fornicator? Person not satisfied of marriage. <laughs> Yeah, you just not married. Just enjoying yourself, just just sleeping with anybody, just everybody. Just come on, everybody. cookies for everybody. Uh -uh. <laughs> I doubt nor idolaters. There we go again with people that worship idols. <laughs> you lighting your little uh, little incense to the big fat guy. Um, 
And some people say, well, I'm not really worshiping the idol. I just got it in my house because it's cute. <laughs> I'm sorry. What are you doing when you put that idol in your house? You letting them spirits come in you. Absolutely you are opening yeah. the door for that the demonic in. entity. Yes, ma'am, mother, you are inviting the devil in. That demonic entity that is connected to that idol is being welcomed into your home. That's why I said, if you got some uh, wooden things like the little African masks, um, walking sticks, uh, you have the little people, you know, they have the little uh, kente cloths on them. Um, you got to be careful. You have to be careful. Madonna's, uh, Madonna statues, um, St. Peter, St. Paul, all of those, get them out, get them out, get them out. Even, and I would say, be careful even of those statues that they have of Jesus on the cross because he's not on the cross anymore. Uh -oh. No, he's not. You shouldn't be representing Jesus. Say that, say it. I said, no, he's not. And nobody know what his face actually looks like. They haven't seen it. Well, the, well, the Bible tells us that he was not comely at all. And uh, that uh, he looked like God. So his hair was of uh, lamb's wool. And if you do some research, like there are um, accounts of what Jesus looked like. You know, but he didn't, he did not, he's not dead. He is not dead. So we shouldn't be, I just really feel uncomfortable with uh, representing where he was because he's risen. He's off the cross. Now I don't have a problem with the empty cross because he ain't on there no more. <laughs> right. But when you got him on there, you know, sh the, I just don't, I have, I'm uncomfortable with that. But it says, know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers. What's the difference between a fornicator and an adulterer? Adulterers, one married, the other one not out of marriage. Yeah. Fornicators, they ain't married and they still doing whatever they doing or sexual yes. So a fornicator is a single, you're single and you're not married, you're not um, attached to anybody and you're just having sex with whomever you want. An adulterer is somebody who's married who is sleeping around. Right. Having sex outside of the marriage. You, you're married, but you swingers. Nor effeminate. What's effeminate? Gay. Yeah nor abusers of themselves with mankind. How do you abuse yourself with a, with a person? Maybe mm -hmm. like those dominatrix or whatever, I don't know. Yes, God is not happy with that. Nor thieves, nor covetous. What does it mean to covet? You know what a thief is when you're stealing from people. What does it mean to covet? Right. Something that somebody else has. Desiring somebody else. Desiring, so, yes, okay. desiring something that is not your. I, as soon as we leave here, honey, I'm going to get your you. Some kind of way, something going to happen to you. I'm going to take your husband. Oh, Jesus. Covetous. Pastor, can you pray? Because that really is my husband. That's not her husband. God, I pray that God will give them to me. I'm a boarder. Or I see you with a nice car, and I'm like, you know what? That's going to be my car. I'm going to take that car from you. Covetous. You want something that belongs to someone else. Nor drunkards. Right. So if you're an alcoholic, can you make it in? Nope. Nor revelers. What is a reveler? It's people that are just wild and crazy and just, you know. Out there. Out mm -hmm. there. Riding, yeah. wow. riding dirty. You know, just, just out there. Just gang members. Uh people that are, are uh, living a riotous life, you know, it's always got to wreak havoc wherever you go. You're always starting something. Reveler. Nor extortioner. What is an extortioner? When you, um, I always like try to find somebody out of something. Mm -hmm. Say it one more time. I always try to swindle somebody else out of something. Swindling people out of things. What was another definition for extortioner? It's like when you like hold people hostage for something. Okay. So you, you know, like if, if they have a lot of money, you might take something and say, unless you give me this, you can't have that or whatever. 
Okay, that's a, another good example. And another good example is an extortioner. How about uh, y'all know what a shark is? Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, I'm low, so. shark. Yeah, people that uh, you ever uh, met a pool shark? Yeah, that's an extortioner. You can even do it in games and cards. You know, you just oh, okay. know you cheating. You know you cheating. So shall inherit the kingdom of God. All of these things. You know, that pretty much got it. But you know what the blessing is? It says, and such were some of you. Jesus was like, don't, <laughs> Paul was like, don't try it. Y'all been there. Don't act like you haven't done any of these things. I want people to know that some of us came from that so that you can know. It says, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the spirit of our God. Isn't that a blessing? That's mm -hmm. a celebration right there. Right there, yeah. Some of us came from all of those things that were listed, but we were washed, sanctified, and justified by the blood of Jesus Christ. That's Thank a hallelujah, you. right? You should yeah. just scream hallelujah right where you are. <laughs> Amen. Amen does not matter who you are. God can change you. You can be ready for the kingdom. You can. Be ready. All you have to do is just ask the Lord to be the Lord of your life. Ask him to forgive you. God, I, I can't do this anymore. Just be honest with him. Say, I just don't want to be like that's that. That's it. That's what you do. You repent. Well, you you said a liar when carrying his sight. So yes, so ma'am. be honest. Yes, ma'am. And mother, you are absolutely right. When you pretend like you have it all together, you're not doing anything but telling a lie. When you make excuses for your behavior, my father used to say, hey, nothing but a greasy lie. <laughs> That's what they used to say. When you make excuses, don't make any more excuses for what you cho you're choosing to do. But instead, God, I have not broken this habit because I can't do it by myself. I need right. you to help me. Help me. Yeah. I'm gonna tell y'all, I, I was I was amongst that list. I was right at the top, having a really good time living my life. And finally woke up one day and I was like, I don't like me. I do not like the individual I've become. And God, I need for you to change me. Did it happen overnight? Some of the things that I needed to be delivered from, yes. Other things took time. It took me continuously saying, God, I need you to help me. I don't want to be like this. God, I didn't. Why? Because I didn't have faith that God could deliver me right then. I did not allow the Lord to be completely Lord over my life. But when I made up my mind, I hate this sin. I made up my mind, I hate this habit. When I put the devil in his place, that you do not belong in me. My temple, my body is a temple for the Holy Ghost. That's when God started taking over. And that's why I can stand before you and say, I am living this life. I am living a saved life as much as I know how with the help of the Lord Jesus Christ. I can say that. Could I say it before? Oh, no. Had a line, a little fornicating, a little couple of other things in there. I'm not proud of some things I knew, some things I didn't know. But when I came to the knowledge of the truth, like Mother Smith said, I stopped lying. And I said, you know what? I got to get my life together. This is not the life for me. And once I allowed God to become Lord of my life, all of those burdens were lifted. Did the problem stop? No, problems didn't stop because we live in this world. But the burdens that I had on my heart that I just felt like, yuck, I don't like me, they were lifted. Thank the Lord. So is there anything that anyone would like to say in reference to the lesson? Does anybody need a specific prayer prayed on tonight? Okay, we're going to pray. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Thank you. Father God, we come to you in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you for this Bible study. 
Lord, we ask that you help us to be ready for when you come for us. Lord Jesus, we ask that you take out anything that is not like you. We renounce every sin that is that the enemy tries to bring to us to try to tempt us and deceive us so that we'll go to a burning hell. Lord, we know that you are offering us life and that more abundantly. And we receive the life that you are giving us. We just thank bind you. Satan on every hand. And Lord, we thank you for the victory through the blood. Lord, every habit that I may have in my life, I ask that you take it away. And Lord, I ask that you become Lord of my life from yes. this day forward. I believe that God sent his son, Jesus Christ, on this earth and that God raised, that he died on the cross for my sins, every last one of them, and that God raised him from the dead so that I could be saved. Lord Jesus, come into my heart from this day forward and save me, sanctify me, and fill me with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, the next thing that you do once you repent is to tell the Lord thank you. It's just good manners. Thank you, Lord. Thank Hallelujah. You, Lord. He's giving you a brand new God. start. He's giving you a brand new life. This is the start to a, a new beginning. And then the next thing we need to do is connect ourselves because when a battery is disconnected, it dies. So you need to be connected to fire. You need to be connected to a church that is going to uplift you, that's going to love on you and show you the love of Jesus Christ so you can be strong Thank in him. Lord. So don't forget to do that. I love you all. I'm so happy that you attended my Zoom on tonight. Make sure that you tell your friends and family to attend. We're going to pray before we leave a very special prayer for Brother Daryl. Brother Daryl, I want you to get that blessed oil. You got some blessed oil? Yes, I do. Give me one second, please. He was stung by uh, something. He don't even know what he's stung by. <laughs> but his eye looks like this, like Popeye. And we need for God to heal him. Oh, yes. Heal him now, Lord. 